All right, boys and girls, we're back now. And uh, from previous experience and notes from other folks, I realized that uh, there was some hum in the background on some computer systems. So I turned off all the lights back here to prevent that 40 megahertz uh, hum out of the fluorescent lights back in the back. But in the meantime, I'll get back to do a little bit of description with this little engine here now. We're talking about working on our valves and setting the valve clearances on this engine. So what I'm gonna explain to you here is I'll try to tell you and show you what I'm doing exactly. This is a copy of a page out of, out of the overhaul manual here. And if you guys can see that right there, we're talking valve stem to rocker arm clearance with the lifter deflated. So we're talking about 0 .030 to 0 .110. That is being the maximum. So let me show you what we're talking about here on the engine itself. I got my trusty little feeler gauge here and you're going to see that I've already know what I've got here. I'm going to go to 35 and 3 and that'll wind up being 0 .038. All right. So if you can tell what I've done here, I've got my rocker arms pinned down with a handy little device here and just a little brush. I just use that. What we're talking about the clearance is right here. That's what we're looking at. And so I've got my handy dandy little feeler gauge and I'm going to run that right down in there and that's exactly 038. Okay. Well, 038, what is that? Well, that is not exactly where I want it, but it's above 0 .030 and below 0 .110. All right. So now let me explain to you what's been going on here. Uh, and I will take you through the method in which I've been going through. Now, if you'll look and see, pardon me if I shake the camera around a little bit here, but if you'll look and see what my clearances were when I began, I had 0 0.134, 0 0.133, 0 0.134, 0 0.134, 0 0.147, 0 0.129, 0 0.133, 0 0.134. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's a way out of limits there. So what I had to do is I had to wrestle around and find myself some oversized or some uh, 0 0.070 extra length pushrod tubes so that I could drop those in the engine. Uh, the pushrod tubes, well, let me describe those for a second here. We'll go back to the, uh, to the valve lifter, what we're talking about. Here's a lifter body. You may remember when I installed the engine, put the, when, I, when I built the crank case out, halves up, or maybe not. Here's a, the old camshaft, and for purposes here, I hope I didn't leave this out of the engine. No, this is spare from something else. As that camshaft rotates inside the engine, this lifter body is sitting inside the, the case half over here. And as that, as that camshaft rotates and hits that lobe on that camshaft right there, you can see that big old lobe there, it hits that lobe, it lifts this lifter body up. And lifting the lifter body up with your little hydraulic lifter that drops down in here and this handy little cup that sits in there, and a push rod, this pushes up this way. It's got that shock absorber in there with that hydraulic lifter. This pushes up and down that way. That rotates the arm right here. That makes this rotate in its, on its shaft, which is what you're looking at right here on the engine. You can see how that is. Okay, now I hope you got an understanding of how that works. So it's real clear, it's real important that you have proper valve clearances. It makes the engine run good, it makes it run smooth. Uh, it is most importantly important for the timing and duration of your intake and exhaust valve opening. That's pretty darn important to make sure that you get the right amount of fuel air mixture into the cylinder for combustion when the engine fires off. And it's important to make sure that when the exhaust valve opens, it's open for the proper duration to properly scavenge all the exhaust gases out of the cylinder. Now, I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you guys. But in the meantime, you'll see where I started from, and you'll see the combination of numbers that I began coming up with. Because after I changed over from the big, uh, from the short push rods I had, push rods I had, I wound up with numbers in the 040, 050, 027, 023, 050, 029 and 006 that was a really tough one right there to overcome so now to overcome that issue what i wound up doing was i wound up systematically removing 
each push rod, each rocker arm, switching them from the next cylinder from the other cylinder where I got all my measurements and I found that I had a fat one and I had a short one. Then I started switching the combination of push rods and rocker arms around until I got the right combination so that now all my clearances are right there in the neighborhood of 040052, 045, 045, 057, 040, 036, and 038. You can see that I've come up with the reasonably decent numbers. My numbers, I really wanted them to all to be somewhere around 60 to 70, 0.06 to 0 0.07. However, I'll take what I got right now. I've spent an extraordinary amount of time doing the combination of push rods and rocker arms so that I could get this all where it belongs for the book values. Now that that's all done up, nothing left but to clean up this sheet metal mess here, put the valve covers back on it, pull all my plug leads around, hook all those up, get my baffling all together, throw the cowling back on it, of course, you might want me to torque down and properly get my propeller back installed there. And then uh, it'll be ready for a test run. So, boys and girls, check back with me in a little bit, and we'll see where it goes from here.